Hey, welcome to the Raising the Standard Show. I'm Dr. Andrea Ramirez. I am thrilled to have with me our two guests that I can't wait to share with you a little bit about. Brandon Polk is the CEO and founder of Arrowhead Advising. As social reformer, counselor, and creative, he addresses today's sensitive topics, including race, education, and faith. And we also have Josh Johnson, follower of Christ, husband, father of two, sports fan, and runs on coffee. You gotta love that. He's a youth director at Graffiti Two Community Ministries in the South Bronx. Thank you guys for being here. We so appreciate it. So we we just want to dive in. I know that we talked a little bit about marginalized children in our conversation even before this began. Um, what do you see as the gaps where we're at as a country and what the church can do about that? Yeah, sure. I think um, number one, what's going on right now is a, a real inability to have kind conversations with each other. Mm -hmm. um, I'm based in Washington, D.C., and one of the biggest troubles that I see is being able to sit down with someone that you don't think you can agree with mm -hmm. and actually say, you know what, I understand your point of view. I don't agree, but I think maybe we could find some common ground and work together. And I was saying earlier today, you know, that I had heard once that if you want to make a good deal or the, or the way to measure a great deal is actually knowing that no one gets away getting all of what they want, you know? Right. And I think when it comes to the church and our ability to be credible in the earth right now when it comes to leadership and having influence in the areas of education, especially for black and brown students. Yeah. We have to begin to learn how to come outside of the bubble of what our, of what our experiences are and really begin to touch um, what real students are going through, what real families are going through, and touch the political realm as well. Yeah, I think as I think about kids, I wonder if they're just hoping and praying, uh, maybe some may be praying, uh, that the adults in their lives would, would kind of get their act together and talk to each other and work with one another and find that one place. I've been asking that question to a lot of folks. Like, what is that one area that you can agree on? You can disagree, agree to disagree on all the other areas, but what's that one area that you can say, for the sake of the kids, we're one on this, and then move that forward. So, Josh, we know you're doing this in the South Bronx, real time, real life. Um, can you talk to us about what that looks like um, from week to week? How do you prepare students? Well, one of the things we just work to really help our students understand is first and foremost that they're creating the image of God. Yeah. And that's the most important thing for us as adults. Uh, to, And then we also hold them to a, a different level in, in the standard that we have in our society today. Uh, we, we have created this, this term of adolescents or teenagers or things of that nature. Um, we like to, at Graffiti 2, we, we try to encourage them to be, a, be adults. Um, and because the Bible is very clear, there's either children or there's adults. Mm. Uh, there's no in-between. Uh, so if they want to act like an adult, we're going to treat you like an adult. Mm. Uh, but they don't know how to act like an adult if there's not an adult showing and modeling that for them. So we try our best with our staff and with our volunteers to be those adult role models that they may not be seeing at home. Mm -hmm. uh, but also in the same token, we're not only teaching them, we're teaching their adult parents how to be adults as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's different parts of our program that are able to filter into the home, whether it's with our, uh, our behavior strategy or whether it's with our values, whether it's with our, our principles that we teach there. Uh, we encourage our parents, use these same things in your home. Uh, they're effective here, they'll be effective there, and then they'll trickle into the school system as well. That's fantastic. So really, Graffiti 2 Ministries is a practice ground for parents, sounds like, and then they can in incorporate that into their home, but they can kind of test it out with other adults that are modeling that. So I know you guys play the game of life. Can you tell me a little bit about what's behind that? That's a board game, right, that, well, that you guys play? Definitely. It was a board game that's been around for many years, and we, we just took it and thought, how can we make that into a real-life application? Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of really life applications on that board game. So what we've done is we, we begin the process of starting out early. Uh, we talk about education. Education is the springboard into life, mm -hmm. and getting that early education uh, from the very beginning. And we even go through the college process, even as a middle schooler. They're going through the college process. We're getting online, introducing them to college applications and job applications, things of that nature, how to carry a part-time job while going to college. Um, and we do that through time management sheets that they have to actually sit there and fill oh, out and okay. things of that nature. We're also teaching them budgeting. Uh, that's something that's definitely not something that they're familiar with, but to see the ins and out of a checkbook. Um, and that's something that's missed on them quite often. Uh, so we start that process and they just go through the game of life and they get to pick what they truly desire to be. Uh, through their college essay that they will write, through their uh, school that they would be accepted into. Uh, they'll even have college debt coming out of that, that uh, if 
they didn't apply for the right uh, scholarships and things of that nature. So we try to make it as real to life as we can. Um, and with them doing that, they start learning, oh, not everything is easy. Uh, it takes mm -hmm. some work. It takes some, uh, it takes some motivation and, and takes some challenges to, to, to do this thing called life. And uh, at the end of the life, we uh, throw a retirement party. So at the end of the school year, <laughs> we have a big retirement party and uh, they will actually have a bank account that they can use to purchase gifts in the, in the store that we will set up for them. Uh, so they will actually take those little fake dollars that they have earned through the game of life. And yeah. uh, we talk about marriage. We talk about everything that life would include uh, through this whole school year. So how yeah. long does the life game last? Is it like... It goes the entire school year. Wow. Yeah. And then the retirement parties at the end. At the end That's such an interesting... I like that because church leaders that are watching this now can incorporate that. You can go and, and play life and, and have it uh, and really teach them some practical tips like that. So uh, as far as um, modeling, preparing them for adulthood, not necessarily having the parental authority, what, what is, um, but feeling called to help them prepare for adulthood, uh, what are some of the uh, barriers that you face? Um, what, what does that look like as far as emotional connections or social connections? What are the barriers that you face and how do you overcome them? Well, first and foremost, for a leader doing, taking that role, it's very challenging for us because it takes it takes a lot of toll on our uh, our physical our mental and our spiritual life as well but because we see so many students make foolish decisions and make great steps forward just to fall right back into the same traps mm -hmm. and we can't be that parental person that goes in and says that you've got to change this right uh, but by teaching the, the the model that we do there at graffiti too with the respect model they gain respect in us. They gain respect and, and they recognize that we're there because we love them, that we mm -hmm. treasure them and value them. And that in itself gains the respect from that student that even, you know, five, ten years down the road, they may depart from us for a little bit, but they'll always come back because they know that we love them and care for them and that we're investing in them and want to see the betterment for them, not necessarily for us. So. It sounds like it's, it's really an earned leadership position in their life. They're, they respect you, and so they hear you in a different way. And so even without, uh, you can hold them accountable in a completely different way. Exactly. So that's wonderful. That's exciting. Well, I know that your background is you're a social worker and you're a therapist. What, what best practices do you see that parents need to know that are watching right now and that church leaders need to know? How, how do we really impact our students? Yeah, sure. I think actually with Josh talking, I think it's a perfect perfect example of, of what needs to happen and, and uh, really gives me hope for the scalability of where we need to go in the country right now. I think mm -hmm. um, even as Josh and I were talking earlier about how to, to engage without compromising, I think their mm -hmm. program is a perfect example of what it means to be people of, of the Christian faith mm -hmm. and then uh, be able to come outside of our safety walls and then really connect with people that are different. You know, they're working with communities that are not expressively Christian. They're working with children that have real difficulties and they're not really imposing, but they're loving and they're living the gospel really well. And I, and, and I think that when it comes to really touching in a real way families, mm -hmm. best practices are gonna come down to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. They're gonna come down to loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And um, understanding that what our focus is, even on the macro level, has mm -hmm. got to change mm -hmm. into the very same feeling, the very same ethic when it comes to scaling programs like what Josh is doing after, at, um, in, in the Bronx. And I think um, right, right now we're just in a, in a crisis of ideology where it keeps us from really thinking and feeling, I'm a therapist, yeah. what it means to really love people the way that we would really desire to be loved and to touch people and make decisions and make policies um, that are based on our mutual love for one another. Yep. So I just want to give you the last question. I know we've got about 45 seconds, but what I want to know is if, if you're sitting with someone who has a completely opposite view, what should you be telling yourself that will help you to really have a meaningful conversation? <laughs> yeah, one, I don't have to defend myself. Mm -hmm. I don't have to defend my position. I don't have to impose. I don't have to be an insecure person in what I believe. I should be asking myself questions. Do I know what I think? Do I know what I believe? And here's an opportunity to be curious about someone else, someone that's different, someone who maybe is from a different faith background, um, but has a different experience, whether it's in education, their upbringing, learn about people, learn about who they are, learn about their backgrounds, and just know that you're okay if you don't agree with someone, you can still love them right where they're at, and you can be loved right where you're at too. 
That's fantastic. Well, we pray that you're encouraged to make sure that you engage without compromising. God bless you. We'll see you next time.